Warning for people with epilepsy, this game has a lot of flashing images and lights, so if you're not okay with that, you might not want to watch this. Otherwise, proceed with caution. Oh hey, it's Halloween! Spooky time! Spooky's Jumpscare Mansion is an indie spooky scary horror game developed by Lag Game Studios. Initially made in Game Maker, you try to make your way through a thousand different... Uh, well, just a thousand rooms within the mansion, where a barrage of different horror genre tropes are referenced as the main enemies of the game. Yeah, there's a creepypasta reference too. Later on, the game got a renovated HD version, this time made in Unity, packed with cleaner graphics, better lighting, and monsters that are actually scary. I mean, look at this. You know what, this is real horror right here. So, why am I talking about this game when tons of other people have already? Nah, I just wanted to talk about the game because I like indie games, and I just want to talk about projects made by little guys that don't get much attention. Oh, very spooky, this is pretty popular already. Uh, oh, fuck you! I, I like it, it's a meathead. Yeah. And not like some garbage triple A game like Pokemon. Oh, and because unlike everyone else, I can actually get inside the game. W wait, hold up, did, did Wombo get in the game? Uh, let's see. Uh, Oh, you shook, he did. Oh, hey, Jester Horse. I'm just about to jump into another game for a. Oh, wait, why do you have a bomb? I have a bomb. Yeah, but why, though? Bomb. Like, I know we're probably above health and safety regulations, but why do you have a bomb? So, is it gonna go off or something? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. I was getting tired of how low quality my disguise was. Also, our recording set was destroyed by a god duck. So anyways, let's get into the game. For as long as you can remember, legends have been told about the derelict mansion upon the hill that casts a blanket of darkness. Okay, don't care. I'm only going to be covering the main game mode. Other stuff like the Karamori Hospital and Dollhouse DLC could be done in the future if you guys want. But for now, we've got a thousand rooms ahead of us. Oh boy. And you, humble player, make it to a thousand rooms. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Unless I get bored midway through, I have a contract about it where I get my money back when I'm bored approximately about 50.2%. So this is the gameplay! Yeah, that's it. Okay, hear me out. Spooky's Jump Scare Mansion may be a walking simulator. But it's a walking simulator, yeah, there's no defense for that. But with a basic base for gameplay, comes many opportunities to build upon and throw in new mechanics that shake up the gameplay. Uh, I said gameplay twice. Oops. Well, this mansion certainly has some... Uh, scenery. Okay, we're getting there. You know, you've definitely learned how to add detail with all the... Uh, chairs about uh. okay nice good this is almost looking like a real room got some drawers to put stuff in some beds about to sleep in and even this uh piece of art uh, i can see myself living in here i want to stay here just, just get on like, oh uh, okay <laughs> oh is that I got scared by a cardboard JPEG of a wooden stump. <laughs> Specimen 1, also known as Cardboard Cuthouse, is unironically one of the best horror game monsters I've ever seen, purely from the role and purpose in the game. And they aren't even a monster! See, one of the most common ways horror scares people is by using jump scares to get out a cheap spook from people. It's pretty much everywhere you look. Even in non-horror games you'll see it there. The thing is though, it's not all that scary. Sure it gets a shock out of you, but it's not going to be sticking with you for decades, making you turn every corner at midnight to make sure Frederick Von's bear doesn't like, kill you or whatever, I don't know lol. Oh my god! 
Spaceman 1 intentionally parodies this by having very cutesy wholesome images of pumpkins, toast, tree stumps, etc. paired with retro esque or unnecessarily long sound effects. Basically the game is saying, yeah, we scared you with a sudden image accompanied with a loud sound effect, what are you gonna do about it? You may say it's cheap, but I mean, look at what they're made of. They're literally just pieces of recycled cardboard, you know, because it's a cheap jump scare. Okay, that's it, you construction-based creeper. You've spooked me one too many times. Now DIE! You know what? I take things back. Who the heck left this mess on the floor? This clearly isn't gonna bump up your rating, Spooky. Oh, hey, look! Lore! Spouting, splashing, soaking. Inners ingest, in uh, uh, invoking. Nailing never stops the choking. Okay, that was some pretty lame poetry. Ooh, look at me! I'm so good at saying deep stuff! No, no you're not, whoever wrote this. That was really dumb. Uh, this doesn't happen to be your writing, does it? Who am I kidding? Theatre kids are always sensitive to criticism. Specimen 2, or goop, or gel, or slime, or wh whatever this guy is made of, is your first actual enemy throughout the mansion, and I'd say it does a pretty decent job at pointing up a threat. Uh, well, sorta, I guess. Spotting a set of surprisingly well-kept teeth and sharp fingers, this mass of sentient sludge is certainly not going to let you leave in one piece. When goop is active, puddles of slime will start spawning on the floor, slowing you down during the chase. But despite all this, Goop is still a really easy enemy to escape from. The fact that your walk speed is actually faster than his movement speed should probably be enough to tell you that he really isn't much of a threat. I mean, look at this! He can't even get hit on me! The remake even makes this chase easier since he has to wind up an attack to hit you. Still, this isn't to take away Goop's merit. He's still a pretty good first enemy for the player to go up against. Creepy design, disturbing sound effects, and a relentlessly daunting chase fiend that doesn't skip a beat when he's after you. There's even a really cool way he enters the room by turning back into a puddle and slipping by. That's a really neat detail that they added. This also gives me the time to talk about a pretty cool feature of Spookies, that every specimen, except specimen 7, has its own unique game over sequence. Dying to goop, which you'd have to intentionally do, results in the following death screen. I know what you have done and what you have left to do, but it's alright because I'm inside you now. We are one, but I am many. From this game over screen, it tells us that Goop might have consumed us. Well, otherwise, this implies that each victim Goop catches becomes another part of him. We know from the Cat DOS entry that he's claimed 137 other people. So, uh, that's a, uh, that's a lot of death, I guess. Uh. Oh, and by the way, this guy is based on the Lub Glubs from Adventure Time. I, I, uh, I didn't really know where to put this, but uh, it's in the trivia section of the wiki, so here it is. Uh, 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 uh. Well, I've certainly learned one thing tonight. Never insult the poetry of Goopy Sludge Monsters. Oh hey, there's an arcade over there. Yeah, Spooky's Jump Scare Mansion has a fully working arcade within the game itself. You know, no big deal. They're not like deep or anything, but the fact that Kira was like, yeah, I'll just add in an arcade because I feel like it is really cool. Nice, I got over a thousand. I mean, I could have kept going, but I think I'll stick to a thousand. <sighs> You did this, didn't you? After every 100 floors or so, you'll reach an elevator to get to the next set of rooms. This is also where you can save your progress so you don't have to blast through all 1000 rooms in one go. As you enter into the next area... Reference. Graphics time. I've actually never really brought up graphics in games that much, so uh, I'm just going to give a quick review of each game I've talked about so far. Low Gator Game, Short Hike 2, love the colours. Duck Life, smooth but pretty bland. Plants vs Zombies 2, expressive and filled with personality. Egypt, extremely beautiful- oh, wait that's not a game. Bruh. Spookies has a stylistic mix of high res but still pixel arty graphics that I totally dig. The combination works surprisingly well and gives the game a distinct video gamey vibe that contrasts well with the monsters that chase you. If it is out and alive then this is probably my last report. The clicking is getting louder now. G G generic lab assistant. Oh, okay game, yeah, play it up. <laughs> That's something I would not spend time with. I am a spider, and I'm hungry. Bring me a snack. 
specimen free V uh, spider centipede guy is definitely a notable step up from Goop, immediately being faster as he sways closer towards you. Uh, oh my god, is he still talking? Shut up! I'll destroy you! Okay, yeah, yeah, whatever, shut up. Being fast is already one thing, but another trick Subject 5, that's his canonical name, only Spooky's fans would know, can pull off is with the holes he spawns during the chase. Get close and he'll attack from above, having a head start over most other specimen you'll come across. And if you haven't noticed already, Subject 5 has his own environment before the chase begins. Goop kinda had this? But then if we're gonna count that, then we may as well consider any occurrence of Specimen 1 their own room. Despite their lack of theming, dying to Subject 5 gives us one of the coolest death screens in the game. Presumably from Subject 5's perspective, we hear about the freedom he once believed as a dream, but now his eternal hunger causes him to forever hunt down travellers, 43 of them to be specific. Subject 5's cat dos entry says that he's a test specimen being developed, so this endless hunger is possibly a mutation used to make him more ravenous and effective, but why are they being made to kill people? Uh, I don't know, maybe I'm overanalyzing this random indie <laughs> horror game for no reason, lol. Other than that, there's really not that much to talk about Subject 5 that I couldn't explain in further detail with Future Specimen, as he's overall pretty underwhelming when compared to them. I mean, what is there to say about design? Less spooky centipede that bites? <laughs> This specimen does introduce GL Labs to us, which plays a major role to the lore of Spookies. And yes, they're literally called Generic Lab Labs. That's a... Uh, that's, that sure is a creative name. Oh hey, the layout of the mansion! Thank god I can finally tell what this fully intuitive layout of the mansion means. What? We find our way into a Japanese school during our journey. In a mansion. Okay, but we press on, entering classrooms for further investigation. Masuri never came to class today. I hope she made it home okay. Spirits of potentially long gone students patiently lie beside their desks. Approaching too close will cause them to lash out and attack you, before disappearing without a trace. Could it really be true? I thought the fairy tales about the ghost who eats children who sneak in after class was just to keep us from disobeying, but Masuri is still missing. Uh, okay, side note, even though this will break the immersion, I know the whole flashlight thing is for upping the creep factor by removing your peripheral vision, but I, I, I can't, I, I can't read the notes. I, I just can't read them. Look at this, look at this, how am I supposed to read with this? Okay, oh, uh, you proceed nonetheless, traversing the desolate halls of the school, until you hear a whisper from a spirit behind. When we turn behind, we see... <laughs> Yet again, Specimen 4, named Ringu, is another specimen that chases after you. I know by this point it's getting pretty repetitive that all the monsters after you fundamentally do the same thing, and it is true, but I swear things will change up soon. Even now, Ringu is the first of many spectral enemies you'll encounter, which are able to travel through walls, letting them take shortcuts through rooms to catch you. Often Ringu is going to hit you a lot if you're not careful, but usually not enough to kill. Oh, it's gonna happen. Speaking of killing, Ringu's death screen is... uh... She uh... uh... She actually bores you! She opens up her fucking teeth when she attacks you! She eats you and calls you a child! What the fuck? Yeah... I may have said that Goop does the same, although that's honestly kind of a stretch. But with Ringu, you literally see her eat you, and her belly full of couple... Wait, hang on. How, how does a ghost eat a corporeal being or even, like, hurt me? Uh, okay, this is going too far. Let's actually get back on track. Ringu is your typical pale white Japanese spirit girl, said to be from the 14th century. You know, like typical Japanese horror, which apparently likes to use this trip a lot. Like, I swear I've seen like 50 Steam games with the main enemy being like this. Anyways, much like Subject 5, Ringu is another specimen that seems to be contained to kill people. Still no real explanation, but what? Why does Spooky want to kill people with a spooky mansion? Because it's epic? Bruh. By the way, just because other specimen chase you, doesn't mean that specimen 1 can't jump out to scare you. One thing I love about this is seeing people react to cardboard cause out jump scares when another specimen is on the tail. Here are a few choice clips I enjoy quite a bit. As disturbing as I thought you might be up close. Let's... <gasps> oh. Oh. <laughs> hey! 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 Music changed. I don't think it's following me anymore. <laughs> 
Wow, even a cute little spider like that. It's just at the right moment, it can really do a number on you. And I think what Vinny says here perfectly explains how cardboard cutouts is so effective at frightening people, despite looking like, uh, this. While you're being chased by any of the other monsters, you're gonna tense up as you rush from them, and when cardboard cutouts strike, they're gonna get a reaction out of you. Even me, someone who's pretty much impervious to any and all fear, jump at some of these from time to time. Wait, I noticed this randomly became about specimen 1 for some reason. Oops! I awoke today from a brief nap and found before me a bottle of red wine. That's blood, isn't it? That's blood, it's blood, it's gonna be blood, isn't it? I don't think that's wine. Welp, his loss! <laughs> Deeper down, we enter a strange abandoned factory that's long been overtaken by rust. Notes hint at a cult that's been struggling to avoid being absorbed by the darkness, only appeased by sacrificed people. The cult sacrifices a girl for being impure, which displeases someone referred to the notes as mother. Uh, I don't know what to say about this other than like, cult is crazy, wow. But there is one interesting room this locale has. I'm gonna get demonetized for this. Specimen 5, who is called Bab for some reason, is the last somewhat regular specimen you are attacked by, and this one gets downright ruthless if you let her catch you, dealing ridiculously high damage upon contact, as well as distorting the environment around you. This can actually be pretty detrimental to you if you don't know the room layouts at this point. Honestly, Bab is pretty eerie to be chased by, especially the trail she emits that you can briefly see after entering another room. That's real unnerving, especially accompanied by her surreal chase theme. You'd expect Bab to kill you with the huge blade she wields, but the cat Dos entry says otherwise, not even having a hint at what it possibly could be. Dying to her doesn't help much, but I can try to theorise what's happening. So, with the previous context, Bab could potentially be the mother character who may be the leader of the cult. Although the wiki told me Bab is a mannequin. And dying to Bab is us being sacrificed to the darkness referenced in the cult notes. E yeah, that was it. But hey, that's just a theory. Okay, that was actually pretty close. I'm too young to die to worshipping PS1 mannequins anyways. Said to be spiders and poetry writing goop is still fair game though. I, I think I need a break from all of this. Jest Horse, I need like- I need like you to play an ad for the viewers to break up the tension and- But we don't have any new ads to schedule. I don't know, play like a Paper Mario ad or something. Okay. Help! Help! <laughs> Mario's back in a new adventure! He has new friends with special abilities! He has new enemies with funky attacks! What will he save the princess? Find out in Paper Mario! Rated E for everyone. I shall grant you a gift for your progress, so uh... So just keep clicking on. Oh nice! A prize that will in no way be some sort of trap! Yeah, that's bait. Well, here we are, the big one. To those who have played Spookies, you'll know who I'm on about. But to those who haven't? Well, actually, you still probably would know. Yeah, so this is the Ben Drowned enemy of the game. Pretty obvious just by looking at him. I mean, the dungeon before meeting him is pretty much just a Majora's Mask reference, with the whole lens of truth doors, the masks, the fact that the merchant drowns, and the merchant's happy mask salesman ass design, packed with a low poly body. And as if the inspiration wasn't enough to make the merchant infamous, the death screen is just. <laughs> This usually isn't from bad luck either. Specimen 6 is a vast departure from every other specimen you've come up to who will hit you during his chase. And if you don't keep your eyes peeled on him, well... 
Even with your eyes locked onto the merchant, you aren't 100% safe from him. After 10 seconds, he hangs up and then drops down to attack. Once the merchant launches up, you can look behind you on the way you're going and he probably won't hit you. Well, that's probably the best strategy I found. I assume this mechanic is to prevent you from cheesing this encounter by healing, but then again, there's a specimen later on where you can pretty much do the same thing without any consequence. Most players dread this specimen and I can fully see why from first-hand experience. His mechanics are drastically different, his chase theme is as iconic as it's dreadful, and well... <laughs> I may hate the merchant, but I do have to say, he is one of the best enemies in the game and certainly isn't forgettable. If you've made it this far in the video, then thank you. You really should subscribe to my channel and like my video. I've been risking my life going through this mansion and almost died, <laughs> like, once Bruh. during this. And I think that's worthy of clicking a digital button. I mean, at least I don't pump out daily slop like SS Sniper Wolf and steal other people's content. Bro has a bag. Ah, this room. Mm, uh, something's just off about this one. These wall tiles suck. Every so often during your marathon of a run in Spookies, you'll come across a pretty unique room. I even covered one earlier, being the arcade. Although I'm not a big fan of some of the rooms the game will admittedly seldom use. The Howard Room, I uh, think the game calls that, is a constantly looping hallway in reference to PT. And it sucks pretty hard. It kills the pace because of how long it takes to get through, which you can't get chased by specimen in either, and after a couple of loops... Yeah, this is the only jump scare of Spooky's jump scare mansion I don't like. It feels cheap, doesn't really pay anything off, and is weirdly antithetical to what Spookies are trying to poke fun at. The only thing I like about this is that the Spooky Man is just called Howard for some reason. I don't know why, but I love it. Next up is the Foggy Maze. This room also causes specimen to despawn as you're tasked with trial and erroring your way through, uh, well, Foggy Maze. Much like the Howard room, this just stops any momentum you had blasting through the rooms, as you have to get four directions right, and getting one wrong means you have to go through the correct order all over again. Well, hello there. Are you lost, little one? You know, honestly, I don't even know what's going on here right now. Now, if you thought the merchant was a departure from every other specimen... Well, honestly, I don't think any specimen can even be compared to the War of Flesh's section in the game. Specimen 7 is so fundamentally different in terms of horror, so existentially jarring, it's... it's kind of hard for me to put into words what's going on. I, uh, I mean, there's a part where the cat says, knowing your shadow and stuff, and I was gonna be like, oh, it's like Persona 4, but with eldritch undead flesh walls instead of a goofy demon frog saying corny lines. I was originally going to talk about a Geiger's theory about Specimen 7 I came up with, but boiling it down, it was basically the wall of flesh's trauma. But Geiger's also trauma? But then I realized it literally isn't true in the interview with Wambu. I think you said before that this part is mostly inspired by Yume Nikki and American McGee's Alice, along with Jungian psychology. Yeah, those are definitely the main in, uh, inspirations behind this one. Uh, so this part's kind of insane. We enter a giant tower and are greeted by this pale white cat. This is the only NPC you can talk to that won't attack you. It's kind of weird. Then she proceeds to spout Jungian psychology as you go through progressively surreal and... Whatever's going on here, I guess? After you step out of that encounter, we then confront the war of flesh and thus gives chase. This enemy is really easy. His speed is ridiculously slow, and while touching him is an insta-kill, what, are you legitimately gonna have a few close calls with this guy because of these, like, weird symbol things? Even dying to it is pretty underwhelming, as there's no unique game over screen. I'd go to argue this is probably the weakest chase in the game. Well, weakest main game chase. But to the War of Flesh's credit, I don't think that was supposed to be the point this time. Specimen 7 is an allegory for one's trauma and pain, considering how its form shifts depending on the person, as well as being effective on subjects with trauma or past issues. 
That previous section was pretty much the cat giving you therapy, preparing us to face what you'd rather not be. Those symbols during the chase are created from your mind to distract you, to make you lament on the past as the war of flesh eventually consumes you. There being no unique death screen to Specimen 7 represents how there's no bombastic crazy death event or anything. You just succumb to your own trauma. Surviving Specimen 7 is you moving on and overcoming the pain you've given yourself for the past by moving on as you keep pushing forward. One thing I think that's really cool that I don't see anyone bring up is that you only encounter the War of Flesh once, not even in the Endless mode, which could be symbolic of how you overcome your trauma, letting yourself able to be free of yourself from the burden you weigh on yourself. Oh my god, I put yourself like four times in that sentence, that does not look good. If that is intentional then, I think that's genuinely awesome. I love games that utilise mechanics for their stories, but the only thing I'd probably change about this enemy is to make it at least twice as fast, as well as having the rooms be much larger and winding. Otherwise, this is definitely one of the best specimen in the game, hands down. Oh my god, am I actually outside? No way, we're like 50 kilometers underground at this point, of course not. Oh wow, there's even deer here. Violent deer, they're violent, that was always a thing about them. Of course, my favorite, I love violent deer so much. Before we meet Specimen 8, we obtain the axe, which actually adds a surprising amount of depth to the game, especially in endless mode. But for now, we just have to chop our way through these boarded up doors and these stupid deer things. Bruh. Once we enter the weirdly ruined yet foreboding building, there's a record player you can play which has this secret, uh, secret, uh, wh where is he? Where, uh, oh. He spawned for like a split second in my playthrough for some reason. Okay. Die, deer! Die, you stupid little deer! Die, you weird blue like ponies! Wait, what was that? Eh, probably nothing. Oh my god, it's the deer lord! Hey! You've been murdering deer, haven't you? Yeah, because I don't like them. They keep attacking me. You better stop killing my children or- Oh, you think I'm just gonna stop at them? No, I'm gonna kick your ass and slice you in- Uh, hang on, uh, uh. Dear Lord's definitely one of the game's better specimen, even after the amazing story the War of Flesh had, but I don't think it was a good idea for the Dear Lord to be the one you get the axe with. I mean, like, you get the axe, and then the game silently tutorializes its uses, like breaking open doors and attacking minor enemies. So you're then like, okay, time to attack the Deer Lord. <laughs> oh. It's not even that all the spectral enemies can't be hit in general, as one of the latest specimens, for some reason, can be hit? Uh, but we'll get to that later. Besides that not-so-great design choice, this guy rules. Specimen 8 has one of my favorite designs in the- No! I'm not a furry! Shut up! game, being this imposing, tall deity based off the Wendigo, with pure white eyes always glaring at you, and once he closes in, his cloak opens up to show the claimed victims he's captured, and when you think a war is enough to keep you safe from him, the Deer Lord will walk through his own dimension to catch up with you. Uh, oh yeah, that. Deer Lord was initially kind of a pushover for how easy he was to escape, being even easier than Goop as well as dealing less damage despite how late in the game he starts chasing you. Deer Lord gained a pretty substantial buff though later on, being able to rapidly warp through walls to catch up with you. This actually makes Deer Lord work a lot like a certain specimen later on, where you have to keep it close and not too far, which I actually like in gameplay. Okay, so what if, uh, I didn't kill the deer? Uh, uh, no. Probably. Okay, so what if I told you I actually didn't kill the deer? I saw you kill them. No, uh, I didn't kill them. It was an imposter of me that hates deer and would cut them up to eat their flesh. I, I wouldn't do that. I mean, look at me. Would someone like me really kill such an innocent animal? I have no opinion on the morality of mortal beings. <laughs> Okay, I have a better idea. What if we became friends and stopped that fake imposter me from killing deer? Okay. Oh, also I'll talk about you positively in the review. What? Before you're even able to find your bearings with the Deer Lord's disorienting abilities, he straight up speaks full sentences when chasing you. Your submission is Why do you run, child? Why do I run? Uh, cause I'm trying to get out of the mansion, idiot. Bruh. Dear Lord's death screen is an interesting one. Unlike every other death screen up to this point, you're given a brief period of gameplay where you wander across the blood-soaked path of the Dear Lord's forest dimension, the same one he uses to warp. 
After walking along, you eventually confront the Deer Lord until you eventually succumb and join them. Also, his chase for him is perfect. It's daunting and adds to the atmosphere of his chase, what with the faint noise that covers your screen matching the crackling, faint music. Deer Lord pretty much excels in every field and holds up as one of the best specimens in the game. Although, I do think the next one actually tops Deer Lord. In room 610, we enter the older location of GL Labs. Eh, uh, see, GL Labs came back up. I told you they were important. Uh, anyways, this place has been abandoned, but why? Notes explain that Spooky needed certain things to salvage from the location. It's a specimen, isn't it? Also not helping to this is that the specimen in question apparently likes to grow on people. In a bad way. Whatever this creature is, it can't be outran if you try to escape it, if there's anything to go by with this last note. But before we can pass on through the door, we have to turn on the power to leave when... Oh, I don't think he's supposed to look like this. Specimen 10, who's a parasitic life form, is a pretty divisive one. Some love his shifting gameplay while others hate how slow he is. But me? This is my favourite specimen in the game. The parasite chases after you at a mm, pretty casual pace and bites you up with his... Uh. You have teeth, you chew, chest, cavity, oh yeah. Yeah, that. <laughs> This will also start to infect you with this parasitic haze, blocking your vision. Just as that note says, you have to keep the parasite close, which also lets you see his lovely assortment of oddly well-kept teeth. But if you can't stomach looking at this thing and try to run away from him, well... Yeah, he turns into this guy. The parasite will detach from his host and become this wormy creature to catch up with you. And the kicker is, you can't escape from this guy. The parasite's worm form is straight up faster than you. This enemy was even more ruthless in the original version too. He wouldn't leave the worm form after hitting you and would often rush ahead when attacking as well. Oh, you too. So you may say, wow. So you have to walk slowly for this entire chase? And I say yes. Stop being patient. See, pretty much every monster in the game can just be brute forced by running away from them. Even a deal lord and a merchant if you know how they work. But the parasite isn't like that. He's more like, hey you, stop running, walk with me, okay? And I love how it affects the dynamic of the player and the enemy by making you keep watch of it and make sure you don't make too much distance. This also gets you a good glance at his design, which is so good. Being this malformed, barely human piece of flesh, which opens up to the teeth bearing chasm it uses to attack you with. And the chase theme is perfect, being this slow but mind-meltingly surreal audio that can barely be recognized as music, which feels like the audio equivalent of being sick, perfectly fitting with the infection he inflicts. I genuinely love this monster to the point I somehow think it's actually cute. Being this little gooby guy going on a brisk walk with me, with his little chompers, he's giving me a big hug. He is such a cute little cinnamon roll. Aww, he's infecting me. How cute. He's gonna spread his love out to the world. I just wanna hug this adorable guy so much. Oh my god, this guy is so wholesome. Look at him. Aww. This is so awesome, it almost makes me forget the fact that I unleashed a duck god six months ago that- w wait hang on. What's Jakob even doing now? Wait, why am I destroying a city? Should I be morally responsible for this power, even after creature plunged in a bad of the kind? Nah, everyone should die. The Parasite's death screen is pretty cool. The normal text, if you can actually read it, it's all about losing your senses and humanity as you deform into a mindless animal with only instinctual thoughts. But then the binary tells the opposite. You are more than just an animal. Use the soul you've been given and be responsible for your actions. Well, uh, kind of hard to be responsible when you're dead. <laughs> the one thing I don't really enjoy about Specimen 10 is how much it flashes your screen with hallucinations. But that's more a major issue with the game in general. Uh, this game's kind of a lunatic when it comes to flashing images and stuff. I really, really do not recommend this game if you have epilepsy, or even can't handle sudden flashing lights, because this game is unhinged when it comes to that, and I really don't like it because not only is it disorienting in gameplay, but it also just kind of takes me out of it for a moment. Like, do we really have to see this weird flashing stuff? Specimen 11 does it better. Why didn't every other specimen do something similar? Oh, that reminds me. Oh no! Excuse me, why is there a McDonald's here? Of course there is at this point, what else am I expecting? What? Dear Lord, what the heck are you working here for? And you too, Parasite, why is- 
No, you guys were with me. What's going on? I work here. Okay. But who's that guy? I work with an abusive boss. Specimen 11 section sure does, uh, give an impression with its locale. I mean, its whole section is pretty much a half joke, like literally because Arby's bad. No way! But besides the EAT BEEF posters littered about, the food demon has one of the more in-depth stories within, noting a new employee's experiences at a restaurant which suspiciously starts getting popular, with people constantly returning to the restaurant to buy excessive amounts of food, and the writer starts hallucinating after eating a burger. This actually coincides with the food demon itself, using hallucinations against you without doing, uh, the types of hallucinations the parasite does. This extends to hiding the doors, testing your memory on room layouts. Also, you can hit him with the axe for some reason. I, I don't know why. I, I forgot to mention it, but the parasite was corporeal and he couldn't be hit. But then we can hit a food demon who phases through walls? Anyways, spooky tip. Goop, subject 5, the merchant, and the food demon can all be hit with the axe to stop them. So don't forget that. Don't bother trying the other specimen though. Apparently the parasite even goes into the worm form when you do it. Bam, 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 bam. Look how easy it is to stop this guy, dear lord. How haven't you, like, beaten him up or something? Because I don't use brutalist weapons of my kind, pure human. Well, first, I'm anything but human or an animal. Second, you're like a ghost deer. Can't you, like, hit him because you're also a ghost or something like that? You can't absorb demons, you idiot. When the food demon does whatever it does to attack you enough, you're given some gameplay before confronting the monster, similar to the deer lord. This time, uh, you're in a meat room. This is then followed by, uh, oddly religious themes, with the binary- Oh, this specimen also has binary too. Literally saying, believe in God, but question the teachings of man. Uh, okay. Who put these religious themes in my burger? Oh, right. Carry on, I guess. One last thing that's interesting about the food demon, in the cat dos entry, whenever he kills, the food demon will take the victim's soul, which according to the cat dos, isn't effective. Seems like GL Labs and Spooky have probably been capturing, or in Subject 5's case, creating these entities to harvest the souls of unlucky travellers. We still don't know why they're taking people's souls, so let's move on. Uh -huh. I don't think I made this far. And you got an axe? Nice. And also, what, what are those two specimens doing with you? They're my friends! That's debatable. Oh, okay. See ya. I am not your friend. Well, all friendships are temporary one way or another. <laughs> Specimen 12 segment has you trying to unlock rooms across the mansion until you're able to escape. Obviously though, it's no cakewalk as you're constantly being hunted down by an old man who bears a large sickle, and uh, he really wants to introduce you to it. Fighting the old man with the axe is futile, so in a similar manner to Clock Tower, we have to hide out of the man's sight until it's safe to keep investigating. But while the old man is out scanning for us... You'll like being dead, I promise. Uh. This guy isn't scary. It was never that tricky to find a place the game wanted me to hide in. It never felt like I was barely able to hide before he got into the room. And even if he does get in, oh, 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 it's okay. You can just like hide whenever you want and he won't come after you. It, it's all right. And when he actually speaks, any tension is immediately lost because of how goofy his lines are. Are you in here? You like being dead? I promise. I'm so lonely. I can smell you. Oh no! You're wasting both our time. I'm so lonely. Yeah, this old guy kind of sucks. YouTube! He's barely a threat, does not at all make me spooked up in any way, and also, he's ugly! <laughs> Anyways, this guy is in specimen 12, the mansion is. Yeah, that's right. That building we're trying to escape is the specimen itself, being a paranormal mansion that's built itself around Spooky's mansion. It's also taken that old man as a host to use to kill any travellers within. The walls and decor are all confirmed to be painted over, which it somehow did? I, I don't really know how a mansion is able to paint itself.
Although I really love the mansion specimen concept, with you constantly having to hide within it as its host tries to kill you, the gameplay is way too straightforward and easy for it to really be all that interesting to me. I think what could be done to make this section a bit more interesting is that they could have multiple hiding spots where you have to find the best one to hide, there's more places to investigate, and make the puzzles more interesting than a basic fetch quest. Not really a disappointment, but I think this specimen has potential to be a really fun change of pace from the constant chases you go through. But, with disappointment, I'm afraid to say that the last specimen is just garbage. Yeah, that's right. I know the music is unfitting, but I've got some beef to sell with the siren. Specimen 13, the siren was the one specimen I actually didn't like throughout the main game. Sure, Goop was pretty mediocre, and the paranormal structure, uh... Well, the voice lines were pretty goofy. You like being dead. But somehow, almost everything about the siren just misses the mark. First, oh, lovely, it's dark again. And unlike last time, you don't have a flashlight for some reason. I, 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 don't, I don't know what happened. So I ended up bumping into walls constantly until I eventually, and I do mean eventually, find the uh, uh, amnesia reference. Oh, everybody. Yeah, this specimen is pretty on the nose with the reference. But that doesn't mean the specimen is bad. Bab, the wall of flesh, and especially the merchant were all pretty obvious with their references. But they all stood out in their own ways. And the siren has her own story of her... Uh, e eating whales. Okay. After a memory check and us lowering the water level, we're finally able to get into the main chase. And guess what? It's awful! Much like the water monster from Amnesia, you have to avoid a water lurking siren by traversing through the conveniently littered crate spread across due to the entire room being flooded with water. Why are there crates randomly set in these rooms? Uh, Reference? The water will slow you down to a crawl, and even when sprinting, the siren's gonna catch you up. This means you're gonna have to wait on the crates for the siren to lose track of you and swim away to progress. This is also where my problems lay. The problem with this chase is that, uh, it really doesn't feel like a chase. It feels more like a long drawn out walk, but you have to stop walking every two seconds because some evil dog is trying to attack you when you move. And you know you don't want to be hit by that evil dog. The water is slow, the siren changing her mind to leave you alone is slow, if you get hit the chase becomes slower because you have to wait to heal, and if you try to move while you've been hit then you could die, and the chase becomes even slower because then you'd have to do it all over again. But basically this entire chase is a long drawn out slog. It's not even a slow burn kind of deal like Spooper, because if you get hit, oh, oh, it's okay, you, you can just stand on a crate to heal, no challenge, it, it, it's alright man, we, we got you bud. I don't get why the Parasite and the Paranormal Mansion get flack for being slow, but then people say this is the best chase in the game. With the Parasite, you're basically doing a balancing act between keeping close enough for him to not transform, but not too close for him to get a bite out of you. With the Paranormal Mansion, sure the hiding sequences are very rudimentary, but you're at least progressing through different sections of the mansion that caps off with you running to escape the old man as the mansion's lost its patience, dragging the host outside of itself to attack. Oh, and by the way, both of these chases didn't have you in Wars that slowed you down son. Both times I was chased by the siren combined into roughly 35 minutes of this slow, agonizingly boring chase. And I also love how you can see the exact moment I was filled with total anguish from what I was gonna have to do for the next 20 minutes. Uh, I also think the design and death screen is kind of lame. Like I get that the siren is, well, a siren, Bruh. but it's just kind of boring where it's like, she's a pretty mermaid, but <gasps> She's ugly? <laughs> really disappointing that we had to end out the game with the only bag egg of the bunch, but now we've finally pushed through 1000 rooms of reference filled horror and the 13 bloodthirsty monsters hiding within. And with that, we can finally escape the mansion. Wow, we're finally out of the mansion and it, uh, looks like adventure time for some reason. Oh, yeah, you're right, we're like 200 kilometers underground at this point. Well, you made it. Why, why are they still with you? Uh, I told you already, Spooky. They're my friends. Oh, congratulations, or whatever, uh, 
Poetry this though, I have a final challenge for you to surpass. But I thought the challenge was to go for a thousand- Just go. Wait, have I missed any of the specimens I wrote down here? Uh, okay, let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, 12. You missed 9. What? Uh-oh. Yeah, I forgot to mention, but I have a mental illness where I skip over 9 when counting to 13. But like, I only saw 12 of those guys. Yeah, maybe I missed someone. Room 731? Was that ever relevant? I, I never realized that when I was escaping the beef god. I mean, he had those weird religious themes and there was like a- huh? Oh, That... Guy... The Taker is probably the most interesting specimen in the game. Unlike every other specimen, unless you count specimen 1, he doesn't really show up normally. To spawn the Taker, you have to be idle in a room for about a minute where he comes out to attack. After he catches you, the game will freeze on his cat window until you move or press any key. Then, the Taker comes out of the door and decides to spam your DMs with Take the Dead 2 over and over again. Hey man, I know I love being a detention hog, but you're gonna get blocked if you try doing oh, that. No. Besides that, there really isn't much to the Taker for throughout the main game surface level, but the more you look into things, the darker the specimen gets. First, why is this room number 731? It's not like it spawns the endless hallway, the closest thing to the Taker's room. So what's the relevance of 73... Oh... Oh, oh dear god. Am I even allowed to talk about this on YouTube? It's pretty dark. Well, what I can say is that the Taker is a survivor of horrendous human experiments that's drawn to the dead, taking their corpses to absorb them into himself, becoming so powerful that he breached containment, presumably to take more corpses. This even explains why he's a DAFK enemy. The longer you're waiting, or in the endless hallway, stuck in the same room, the closer the Taker is to catching up with you. Oh, and a boss fight? Uh, it's alright. You just avoid his attacks and then hit these giant balls of energy back to him. Nothing really that special to write off, but all the backstory behind him intertwined with the gameplay is so intriguingly dark that he's a pretty captivating specimen to read about. If you want to find out a bit more about the Taker, then look up Wamboo's section on the Taker in both the interview and the ranking video, as well as go to the wiki to check it out, because it's uh... I don't really feel like talking about it in a video like this, even for Halloween. Hey! Give me your power immediately now! I am your god! I will take your soul! <sighs> Congratulations, you did it! It was interesting watching you swing your axe around like that. I, I know you'll make this fine specimen. Oh, I'm more than worth a simple specimen, Spooky. And I think I've got everything I needed from here. What? And that's Spooky's Jumpscare Mansion, and yeah, this game rules. Not only is it just a sweet little love letter to the horror genre as a whole, referencing anything from mainstream horror like The Thing and The Ring, oh hey that rhymed, to games like Resident Evil and Silent Hill, and yes even creepypastas, but it's also just a fun game to be a part, whether in person or on video. I've played Endless for like 20 hours and I still have a blast watching people flail around as they try to scramble through spookies. Hey, 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 run! I can't run, I'm too fat. Oh. <laughs> run, little fat one! Run, run fat man, run! Sure, the gameplay seems pretty bare bones, but play it in person and you're gonna feel that adrenaline pumping as you flee from the specimens, or fail and watch your eyes get poked out by the creepypasta specimen. Either way, this is definitely one of the best and surprisingly well-paced horror games I've played. By Room 60, you're gonna be hit with monster after monster, each with their own unique mechanics as you make it through the maze-like structure of spookies, with just enough cheesy self-awareness and cutesy relief to keep you seeing through to the end. 
Anytime Halloween strikes, I'd highly recommend booting this game up for some horror-filled doorway dashing. Alright, last thing to mention are some people that deserve some credit. Super duper mega credit to Rom M. He made music for every specimen in the game and they're all bangers. Please go support him or like the music if you want. I've linked the music down in the description if you want to go hear it yourself. Credit also goes to everyone's video footage I've used. From the Mind Man, Glitchmaster1001, 8-Bit Ryan, Markiplier, Vinesource, Buffmeister, and Only Plays. Finally, huge credit to Akuma Kira for creating Spooky's Jump Scare Mansion. I think you've made a really good game and if you want to see more from them then you should check out Lost in Vivo. Uh, I think the Dear Lord even appears as like in that game as an easter egg. Okay you two, I'm gonna have to tell you about how I accidentally created a duck with godlike powers and why I brought you two out of here. Why don't... Okay Dear Lord, I, I know you might not trust me but but look hear me out. No, like why do you need us for whatever this god duck is up to? Just hear me out. It is hot. Thank <laughs> you.